Hi everyone. So this is the Hania show. So today, um, since we're in the uh, holidays 2021 and the year is coming to an end. So I thought I'd talk about um, Hania Travels, the Hania show, and including myself. That's me, Hania, of course, that you know, uh, for a year in review of 2021. So in 2021, a lot of things happened with me. Now, some things to begin with is um, I'm going to just share my screen right now. Just give me a minute. To start off with, I have actually been pretty down and that I could show you why. So yes, I'm still down about it, but not all romantic relationships are pretty good, which is a pretty long story myself. So if you talk about which, I could tell you in this way is um it was it was pretty still feel sad about it yes i was sad in the beginning of 2021 as well and the only way to see it is because you broke a 99 the whole andy samberg you can name anything you know what i'm talking about i'm pretty much talking about me and my story with my cousin which didn't end so well but right now he's in pakistan and i don't want to say his name but anyways you get the point of that like the whole story so yes i'm still upset about it now the other thing is is that i did take um trainings from costi and i started off uh let me show you the costi website so this was really really good trainings that i did so some of the things i took was um i took a lot of uh employment training i took soft skills i took um, this other course that I could show you, it is called um, Graphic Design. Well, okay, this is the Instagram page. It was called WeedArt. So WeedArt.com, so let me put it in. So this was this, so I took it for six months. So this was really good. And in here, you could also find where it says some of my, uh, some of uh, my uh, class fellows that I work with, which I'm still in touch with even now, because we established um, a study group later on and um, we are still connected to each other. So it mostly started off with MWC, but we're good at, we're, we're good at, empowering people so yes so here are all the names of all the people that i go, that i'm a team i'm i'm with and with me at the timing i was just reading to i was very new graphic design now i know a bit familiar with this so that was very good so special thanks to read art and special thanks to um my supervisor who recommended me so and uh and special thanks to our instructor in read art that was um this you could see. And then these were all the people. So that was that. Then I took um, a course, I took um, a cooking, I took actually a culinary program, which I actually was selected for um, my, I was selected through my YouTube videos. At that time I had selected my YouTube, I just started my YouTube videos. So I actually did a program called every bite matters so that program actually was a really good program because there were some things people can apply to it now it's mostly for youth and i recommend you all to try it so this was one of the programs that um actually i had taken and this was one of the best programs because it was more to do with life skills not only to do with life skills but to do with culinary skills and with employment and then um Later on in the year, I had started working for an organization called Youth for Change, where I was a host and I did administrative work. So that was some of the things. I got to know people across Canada like that. And that was one of the interesting things. So yes, but in there, I did actually, from Youth for Change to Mokstra, when I was working in the Y. LP, I did experience a lot of workplace bullying. And with me, if you actually get to know me when I was a kid, I actually was bullied a lot throughout, way before I was a blogger and YouTuber. 
way before I even went to pageantry, I was like literally bullied a lot. And that's because people were always trying to make, which is of course, which is also a very intellectual property situation to got to know later on. I experienced it not only in school, but I experienced it even through with um, particular kind of cousins, I won't say who. And then in there, in some weird how you got complications when I went to the back, he did start with the guys, so I don't location in fact, so I'm not gonna say his name. So it didn't go well and stuff. So yes, so I experienced a lot of bullying because everyone wanted to take my ideas, make it into theirs. That was pretty much how it's how it was. And it's like I was always been degraded like that. But anyways, in high school, I was a part of tons of things. And then how I actually got into work and I, and how I actually got my job was through my volunteer work. So I still do volunteer work now, which is one of the good things. So I actually did. Uh, so I actually did later on, I started working um, was for Moksha Canada. So Moksha Canada is one of the, is one of the, um, is one of the biggest nonprofit organizations in Canada. So I was, so earlier I was doing youth, pro, so I was in this youth program. But during the year I had experienced, I, yes, I did become a panel speaker as well. I did do um, a workshops. So the thing is, um, I had experienced a lot of workplace bullying in the youth program in there because for some reason, it was more like, I don't know what was going on, but it was so extreme to the extent that it was, it was more about um, what's in my emails and it was more about what's what I do ex instead of the work. So I felt like, no, the coworker was, was misbehaving with me since the day one, since I was in another program and I got transferred to Moksha Canada. Um, thing from my from my other job to this job, and then I had this. So luckily, I am my supervisor is really good because and some of the other people in there was really good. So I started working with the seniors. So now I'm currently so my work. Well, all of my this term ended. I work with um with the seniors program with Moksha Canada seniors, and it was a really good experience. I recently also um did do a. Did do a session on traveling because, as you know, Hanya Travels blog and YouTube channel is uh, when I first started, I named it Hanya Travels, which was the reason why I named it was because at the time it was before COVID, it was way to travel recommendations in this. Slowly during COVID, I developed um, I developed more of a content and I gave and I gave more things into it, but um, so my focus was traveling and then. Uh, the Hanya Show eventually is a new initiative I recently started. Then I began, um, like recipes was a part of it anyways, but then I began doing book reviews, this review. I did like different things. At the time during the lockdown, the reason why I did uh, videos in Ontario because I couldn't, because no one was allowed to go out because of the whole COVID-19 travel restrictions. So I didn't go out until a year and a half. That was just recently, you must have seen my Hanya Travels video of California and of Alberta, so you have an idea. So it was primarily for that, so I got back on track on that. And uh, like not like back on track, I did, and I still go for my focus of what I used to begin with. And then yes, I still continue with the rest of the content that I do. So um, anyways, so I did a session on traveling. Now, besides traveling, there's a lot more that, the, that Hanya Travels does. And the Hanya show is actually one of my, really good things. It's a really great initiative that I have. It's for anyone who wants to promote themselves, whether it's artists, whether it's businesses, this show is for you to come and for you to promote yourself. That is what the thing is. And at the end, what I've noticed is at the, uh, since I've been doing it since the summer, so it's been six months, I've been doing the Hanya show. And in the next year, there will be more of the Hanya show episodes. There's a whole lineup that I have planned. Of which guests to call and I'm doing it by different I have a whole other thing in my mind for next year so uh thing is I've seen people who come on like the people I call on my show they actually um they have or they actually get what they're looking for because people seem to know them and I'm not like a media company and I'm not like a like a production company I'm just a blog and YouTube channel and this show actually was a really good idea that I had and it's been benefiting people since then. So my motive of the Hanya show is I try to benefit the, the people that come on my show and they talk about themselves because that's what it's all about. The uh, other things I do 
that is a different story, but the Hanya show is particularly for this. It's one of my segments in there, other than my reviews. My reviews and stuff, yes, you will see them. I'll even have more recipe videos coming up because I have a whole thing planned. And other than that, one of the, the one of the best decisions I made this year was um, that I went into pageants. So going into pageants was actually one of my best decisions I actually ever made. So it was, it's actually hard to know how, it was actually one of the best decisions, and I'll show you. So some of the pageants that I'm actually part of is um, is a City of Brampton pageants. So I'm technically a part of this, and I've gotten to know a lot of amazing people uh, by being in different pageants. So this is actually Feminicity of pageants, and these are some of my, uh, some of the people you could see, and I become friends with them. And this is my picture right here. So, 2022 is looking good for me already. Then, um, another thing I I am a part of another pageant is, um, Global United Pageant, which is going to be um in this January so that is this so I'm part of that so that is this so I'm part of this pageant then I'm a part of the Miss Pers oh, okay Miss Personality pageants so that I could show it to you so personality pageants Canada so I recently, the one accomplishment I have made um, is, uh, let me show you this. So a recent accomplishment I actually have, let me stop sharing this for a minute, is I've been uh, one of the judges top pick, uh, selected in the top five, or I think top six um, of, uh, Miss Queen Canada. So that was one of my accomplishments. Besides, I've also earned an accessibility award as well as uh, Ontario Volunteer 10 Years of Service Award. So that was one of the best decisions. And along with pageantry, how this is all going in is because volunteer and what I do overall is um, I've been in it for long. How I actually started, how I actually got to nonprofit and how I currently work in there, although yet my background is in peer legal studies, is because thing is, some of those things what I read that's you would want your work and in pre-legal studies, how this actually goes together. Thing is that often there's regulations in nonprofit. To understand nonprofit, when you start off with volunteering, you see how there's nonprofit organizational bylaws and how there's um Canadian uh nonprofit organization laws. And the thing is, some of this I felt like I had read, some of this I'm still learning it, but it kind of works together. So the thing is, for me, pageantry and community service kind of goes along because I felt like I can really do more. And how I can do more is because thing is, I facilitated, I've actually, um, I know how to, I've done a grant writing workshop. I know how to do, I've done a blogging workshop and I've done cooking workshops. So I facilitated them. So I know how to facilitate. I, I have a team where I volunteer for over more than so long. And the people I know, that's how I've had my connections from college because I am still in touch with um, with a few of my friends from college and we all try to help each other and even the ones from high school. So I, so I know how to work and how to get around. So that's actually one of my good things in there. So when I came to volunteering, I have a more bigger network. So with me, I can, I can figure out a way how to. And it's um, my idea is do information workshops, facilitate workshops, outreach to people, and pretty much that's my motive. So the thing is, one of the other pageants that I was saying is personality pageants. Now let me just show you a page of it. Personality pageants, so I'm technically a part of a few personality pageants in the next year. I am uh, also a part of, just let me show you this for a minute. I am also a part of 
Miss Confidence Canada. So that is one of the things I'm actually a part of. And just let me just show it to you. Uh, hold on. So that is this. Anyone can register even now. It's a great, it's a great uh, virtual pageant you go into. So that is one of the things. So definitely Miss, uh, Miss Confidence Canada. And then the one last one is um, Miss Sparkle Nation. So um, with this, I'm technically, um, let me just show you this. So I am part of Miss Sparkle Nation as well. And I actually thought like, since um, I like to try anything. So I'm actually in, uh, I'm actually gonna be representing Canada as Miss International Canada Sparkle Nation contestant. So that's how it's going to be. So. That. And on top of that, Brooklyn Nine Nine. That is this had ended this year today. And um, yes, I see that I, I, Brooklyn Nine is, is one of my favorite shows that I can keep rewatching it again is for a reason. But the reason why it is kind of is tailored to me so is a long story because it goes all the way to this whole romantic relationship that I've been in. It didn't go well. It's a really long story. The guy is in box and provocation. I'm not going to say that much, but I could tell that his birthday is on August 1st. So you know what I'm talking about if you're if you are one of the people who's actually known about this, but I'm not gonna go in more in detail. So, anyways, yeah. The other show is Modern Family. So Modern Family um ended this year. And the one thing that is just tailored to me that's like that's kind of personal in a way is the whole Haley Dylan Dylan thing that is called also kind of in the same stream as that, but it's kind of a long story. So yeah, so Modern Family ended, Book of Nine Nine ended. Um, on top of that, um, some of the new shows that I've been watching was, uh, pretty smart. So I actually enjoyed watching pretty smart. It's actually a pretty good show. Then I watched the school of chocolate. So school of chocolate is actually one of the shows I actually enjoyed. Because it's all to with cooking, and I love cooking. And plus, the pastry chef—I forgot his name—but he like makes like the coolest desserts. So if I was to actually go and like actually like you know see this chef and actually go to one of his restaurants and review it, I would definitely do that. So definitely, School of Chocolate was one of the best shows I've seen. Um, Princess Diary, the Princess Switch. Um, Three, that was actually one of the only good Christmas movies I like. On top of that, I watched a lot of documentaries too. So a lot of documentaries were, um, I watched one about technology. I forgot his name. I watched one about um, Sean Mendes earlier because I love Sean Mendes' songs. Like, I don't know about his latest song, but I love his song a lot. And then um, I, I think... Um, I have watched a few documentaries. I watched one about how the movies were made. And what I got to know was, is that uh, one of the best uh, scripts actually came from your own experience. So that's what actually got me into writing in my own script. So if I was to actually bring in my own script, it's better if I don't bring it in, but I could share that in another thing. Another one of the best courses that reminds me that I took was uh, Dream Weavers. Dream Weavers. So Dream Weavers was actually 
one of uh was by the Heritage Council. So um Dream Weavers was one of the best courses I have actually taken, actually. Because uh, I got to know a lot of different filmmakers and some of these filmmakers, I actually know them now. So um, it was one of the best things that I've actually did. And um, I was there for a little while, but it was really good. So um, now I actually, I actually have a bigger network and we all connect and we're still in touch and um like we all part of we all worked on this like collectively and it was really good so definitely dream weavers so that was one of the things so my goals for the next year i i see myself doing a lot of things i see myself in a lot of pageantry i see myself in a lot of work i see myself in a lot of youtube videos so in our YouTube thing and my YouTube content. So yes, it's next year will consist of more work, more administrative work, if that continues, and let's hope that is. Second is uh, pageantry. So I've mentioned all the pageants that I'm currently a part of. And third is um, YouTube videos. So that means more reviews, more recipes, more travel videos, and more of the Hanya show. So I have a whole list of things lined up. So please make sure you watch and subscribe to Hanya Travels and make sure you also watch the Hanya show and make sure you keep an eye out for more content that I have a whole year of time. So that is my review for 2021 and my goals for 2022. And as you could see, I am with the ugly Christmas sweater today. So that is mine for this holiday season. And I was, and I have this Canada post that I got uh, like uh, from this because I love online shopping. So I'm pretty much since it's a, pretty sure since it's like the holidays, everyone wants to do online shopping. And that's my banner, which I'm going to get a new one. My new logo should be coming up soon, which I'm not going to reveal now how it's going to look. So that's it. So this is my year in review. Uh, the Hanya Show, the year in review for 2021 and goes for 2022. Please watch and subscribe to Hanya Travels and keep, watch, and keep watching. And also there'll be new episodes of the Hanya Show. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.